Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to our monthly webinars here at My Money Wellness. Um, today it's going to be Coach Greg and Coach Justin coming at you. We're going to tell you how to get more bank, B A N K, more bank for your buck. Um, sometimes when we set financial resolutions, much like when we set New Year's resolutions, uh, three weeks later it's like, oh yeah, what were those? And they're gone. Um, certainly, we don't want that to be the case, so we want to give you some tips and some te techniques, maybe some uh, uh, memory items uh, like a cutesy little saying that says, more bank for your buck. We're going to tell you what B-A-N-K stands for, uh, so stay tuned. Um, one quote that we like to start with, or at least at this particular juncture of the year, um, you know, it is a, a new fresh start. Uh, however, Although it is the new time of the year, we can get fresh starts every time. You know, the great news about getting up in the morning is we get a fresh start every single day. So don't fret if maybe it's February, March, April when you're listening to this and we think, well, I've got to wait till next January to set some resolutions. Start today. As Mark Twain says, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. Coach Justin, uh, why in the world do we need to uh, maybe make some changes at some time? No, thanks, Coach Greg. And, and like uh, Greg has said, uh, at the end of the day, it's just about doing a fresh start. And uh, it is start today, whatever day you're watching this. Uh, it could be October 12th. Get started. You know, uh, as an example, as you're looking at the screen here, I mean, 92% of us lose sleep over finances. And there's different reasons why we could lose sleep over finances. For some, it's am I going to have enough for retirement? For others, it might be I'm worried about my light bill getting cut off. Well, am I going to go put my kids to college? Or, man, we can never seem to go on that vacation. And there's different reasons why we can lose sleep over money, and that's why it's so critically important not only to start today, but to start using the bank more for your buck. Uh, and the reality is today and now is the time for the change. Um, there's different ways you can do this, and that's why we're going to use this bank more for your buck is going to show you how to do that. And, uh, you know what, um, you know, it's never too late to really get started on some changes, kind of like we said. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're doing things and, and keep getting bad results or not the results you want, it's time for new changes. It's time for new ways. Looking back at that slide we just showed you, you know, um, uh, we always want to be growing. We want to be improving. Um, kind of the, the saying that we use around My Money Wellness is if your why is strong enough, You'll figure out how. And, uh, you know, what is your why? You've watched some videos on MyMoneyWellness.com. The motivational piece talks about things like emotional hits, emotional tags like relationship, family. I want to be able to give more to church, those types of things. We call those your whys. But in today's society, it seems like we get so busy, so pinned up on where do we have to take the kids today I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I don't care about my why. I'm in survival mode. But I think if we if we put our whys in front of us, um, you know, then then that hopefully is is one tool that we can keep motivate uh, keep ourselves motivated. Justin, what I mean, do you have anything to add there? Maybe on on the whys. I mean, no, you're exactly right. And when you can identify your why, the how is going to happen. I mean, here's just a quick example. I mean, the other day when I was presenting, someone said their why was opportunity. And so I said, elaborate. What does opportunity mean? Well, if I'm doing better with my money, I can do the things that I want to do. I can have the opportunity to take the vacations I want to take, to save for my kids' college. And I know some of this may sound repetitious. But at the end of the day, it really is just that simple. If you have a why, you're going to be willing to make the right choices, the right changes to begin to win. Another case in point I could quickly say is this. Let's say your why is to get out of debt. I'd say the number one why we hear at My Money Want is to become debt-free, become debt-free. If your why to become debt-free is so that you can free up your money to relieve stress, to be able to do the things you want to do, the next time someone says, hey, let's go out to eat, you're going to do the right things, and if it's in your budget, you'll go. If it's not in the budget, we'll make different choices because that choice will rob us from our goal or this choice will help us reach our goal, and it makes life a lot easier. 
Yeah, so we've got to keep that goal in front of us. Uh, one quick example that I have is uh, working with a couple, and they have promised their twins, uh, their currently five-year-old twins, that on their eighth birthday, they're going to Disney World. Now, five-year-olds don't know what three years is, typically, but you know what? They are busting it. This family is to get out of debt. They've got a long way to go. They said they're going to be debt free and they're going to pay cash for that trip to Disney World in three years. But we've done the mathematics. And if they stay right on track, applying a little bit of extra, I mean, we've got it down to the date when they're going to be debt free. So that's, you know, something we encourage you to keep your why in front of you. Keep focused. Um, OK, more bank. Uh, so so as we as we do some of these things, what are some other things that we have to remember, you know, in order to kind of put the whole picture together? So we've come up with a cute acronym bank, B-A-N-K. Justin, what's the B? Absolutely. B is for budget. And I know as soon as you hear budget, you're like, oh, boy, uh, I don't want to do that because it's going to be very constricting. I'm going to have no fun. Uh, in fact, I had a client just the other day that said, I don't want to do a budget. Because if I do a budget, you're going to take all the fun out of my life. And I told them, actually, it's quite the reverse because a budget is a plan. It's a plan to where you dictate where your income goes, where your expenses goes, you're telling your money what to do. And when you can do that, it is so freeing and so empowering. You can ask any coach on My Money Wellness, any of our clients, when they start doing a budget, even the first time, they get it. Now I know what I can do and not just live within my means, but live below my means. And here's what's interesting. If you do this budget stuff right, it will only take you 10 to 15 minutes a month. And one of our videos on My Money Wellness is the four keys to budgeting. I really encourage you to go on there and watch it. It's the first video under do, and it will give you the four easy steps to how to do a budget. It's not that hard. Fear is what keeps us away from doing a budget. We all know what fear means, false evidence appearing real. And when you have that budget right there, it will tell you what to do. And the two common responses after doing a budget for the first time is one of two things. A, now I know why I can't pay my bills because, wow, that tells the story. Or we hear more of these, actually. It says I've got $500 a month left over, $800 a month left over. Where is it? Normally where it is is in little decisions every day that come back and bite us because everyone says, oh, Justin, I'm frugal. I don't live in a very expensive house. I don't buy brand new cars. I don't live designer clothes. I don't take expensive trips or go to five-star restaurants, and we've cut expenses. Why are we still here? Again, it's these little decisions, and when you do a budget, a plan, and you do it every month, it eliminates all of that, and you begin to see success, victories, and that gives you hope, momentum, and empowerment. And, you know, we're looking at this form here again. It's explained in the budgeting videos. If you're overwhelmed, simply drop us a line, support at mymoneywellness.com. Some people will look at this video. They won't have the forms downloaded. Make sure you download the forms right there underneath the video box uh, in that section so you can write this stuff out. Um, you don't have to be an Excel genius or anything. Print the forms out, get the pencil and eraser out, and, and go to work. And, and that right there, some people we're noticing are just watching the video. So get print the forms out and go to work. You know, and, and some of you are saying, ah, oh, man, I got to start. I got to start back to the Mark Twain quote. It can be something as simple as, man, if you're watching this today and you haven't started, get out one envelope. Write down on the envelope Christmas. Divide Christmas by the number of months remaining in the year that you have to save for Christmas. If there's 10 months remaining in the year when you have to save for Christmas, take your $600 budget, divide it by 10 and put $60 a month in. In essence, you are budgeting for Christmas. So we don't want to get you, you know, uh, overwhelmed with the whole budgeting thing. If that's the way you start, you've started. You know, thank you, Mark Twain. Um, Yay, I'm going to take care of the action uh, item, which is A for bank, B-A-N-K. The A is action. You've got to take some action. And if you haven't kind of, uh, you know, heard Justin and I's passion to, to kind of do something, um, I think in our welcome video, we provide the, you know, kick in the pants, you know, kick in the seat of the pants to get going. So we're kicking you again. And, and we all need kicked, you know, every single day, every single morning. What do I use for my kick? Keep your why in front of you. And so what are some action items? Here we go. You know, uh, you got to create a budget. 
You got to seek some accountability. Hey, babe, we're going to meet every Sunday, fourth Sunday of the month at 7 p.m., 9 p.m. Um, if you're single, you know, uh, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, preacher, hey, friend, you know, uh, hold me accountable. Make me show you your budget, my budget on a monthly basis. Uh, Justin said it. We don't need to live within our means. Living within our means is squeaking by. We need to live below our means so we have some extra dollars. And 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 the other action item that we recommend is is we've got to set some goals. Um, and uh, obviously, when it comes to goal setting, holding all of these, you know, just real quickly, Justin, because I'm going to jump into goal setting. But but uh, just just tell us about the importance real quickly of, of discipline when it comes to again kind of doing this stuff. Absolutely. This, this one is very important, and I love the quote right on the screen. Now, if you just see it, this one is the bridge between goals and accomplishments, and that is so true. Um, one of the authors that we at My Money Want Us love to read their book is Dr. Thomas Stanley. Uh, he's written several books on millionaires, and one was The Millionaire Mind. And in that book, and it was researching DECA millionaires, folks with $10 million net worth or more, there were 38 qualities, top qualities that these millionaires had. Like a millionaires. The two that tied for first, one was integrity, the other was discipline. Yep. So most of us that were, oh, go ahead, Greg. No, I was just gonna say, so I mean, in a nutshell, there you go. I mean, you're hearing it from, you know, some of the wealthiest people in the country. Um, but uh were you gonna were you gonna add to that just real quickly before we move on? Yeah, just real quick, and just when it comes to discipline, understand it's hard at first. I mean, we're not just sitting here, yeah, we're passionate about this. We know it's hard, but we also know it's hard being broke. Um, and given the choice to be broke or winning with money, I think all of us would choose to win with money. So if it's going to be hard to be broke or hard to win, we're hoping that you choose to win, and it starts with taking action. And you know what? We mess this stuff up to you guys. We are not perfect. We're not saying we are when it comes to discipline. Man, I'd really like to have that extra pizza, you know, or, or you know, uh, now it is, it is, if you say no to yourself, you know, enough, you'll get into that habit. And again, you'll keep your whys in front of you. Um, you know, so we all m mess up occasionally, but uh, but we've got to keep just going, get this, get this thing rolling in the right direction. So, you know, back to goal setting. Uh, we said one of the things you have to do is, is how to set a goal. So we need to measure it. Um, and I'm going to give you an example. Let's use that example of Christmas. Let's say our Christmas is $600. I need to save $600. I've just measured it. I've got to set a deadline. I need that money by December. Uh, okay, I've got 12 months, assuming that we're setting goals in January. I've got to break it down. 600 divided by 12 is $50 a month. A little more manageable than showing up on December 1st and saying, "Woo, guess what? I need $600. I've got to write it down. Write it on the envelope that says, I will have 600 in here by December. And then we've got to visit it. You know, I'm not saying necessarily put that um, envelope, tape it to your bathroom window or bathroom mirror. But I might say, you know, a note that says, I will have $600 saved by Christmas. So you're visiting it every single day. And so, um, you know, again, just just uh, here you go. We're 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 measuring it. Boom. There's the six hundred dollars. We're setting a deadline. December, breaking it down. Sixty dollars a month or fifty dollars a month. Um, actually, it's fifty dollars a month. The financial coach can't do math today. Um, we're going to write it down. Uh, fifty dollars a month. Um, Christmas on the envelope and we're going to visit it. I will have six hundred dollars uh, saved by December. Um, to do that action item, to do those action items, again, we've got to set some goals. We've got to take action, have an accountability partner uh, to do those. Sometimes it, it takes saying no, Justin. It does. And saying no just sounds so weird to actually tell someone or something no. And what we're saying with that, too, let me just put this asterisk out there. What we're not saying is you have to say no to everything. I mean, even if it's a squeaky tight budget, we're not saying everything's got to say no, but here's what we are saying. If you say no to the little decisions that we talked about earlier long enough and you use that money that you would have used somewhere else towards your goals, whatever that goal may be, your why, you're going to be able to get there. Um, case in point, uh, Greg just mentioned earlier about accountability. If you're single, as you know, we encourage you to have an accountability partner. Uh, a client of mine just recently, 
we met for our first meeting, and I talked to her, single lady, and I said, you know what, we'll encourage you to get an accountability partner so that way you don't trip yourself up. The very next day, she came to work, her back was sore, and she, and she was having a bad day, and she, was, she went to her accountability partner. I'm thinking about going to get a massage today. The accountability partner said, is it in your budget? Nope. Probably shouldn't do it then. I had an email back from my client, a nice big paragraph saying, Justin, thank you so much for encouraging me to get the accountability partner. I'm already seeing progress day one, and I already know this is going to be a great relationship. This is exactly what I needed. Thanks. And so, again, just you've got to learn to say no. And this doesn't matter what income, by the way. I mean, we know lots of people we meet through My Money Wellness, through coaching, where they make six figures or more, and we ask them how much the savings they have, they say zero. Because wow. they, because they can't say no to themselves, and so you exactly. know, yeah. So we just got to keep, yeah, you know, and 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 again, it's not a noose; it's just making the right decisions. We're going to move forward to K killing debt. Um, obviously, we have got to stop ringing up the charge cards, stop ringing up the credit cards. If you do a budget properly. Uh, and you watch the videos, you will budget for things like Christmas. You will budget for things like new tires. You will budget for things like vacation. And then when these gotchas come along, they're no longer gotchas. We're not using our bonuses because we're misbehaving the other 364 days out of the year. We're not using our income tax refunds because we're misbehaving budget-wise the other 364 days out of the year. And you may say, hey, Greg, things are tight. Well, Sure, they're tight. But what happens if you don't get an income tax refund or you don't get a bonus, then all of a sudden your world crumbles. So we've got to kill debt, not add to any debt so that we can really kind of enjoy some of these things and, and work to get out of debt. Why should we get out of debt? Well, because we got one hundred and forty six thousand dollars of mortgage debt. We got fifteen thousand dollars of credit cards. We got thirty one thousand dollars you know, of student loans. Um, debt is all around us. Um, speaking of student loans, you know, um, if, if, if you have kids that are contemplating college or you're getting ready or you're making these decisions, man, um, see if you can do a junior college for the first couple of years. Take a look at this. Um, in the age 18 to 34 year old range, uh, those who took out student loans, 83 percent of them are still paying them back. Look at the 35 to 45 year olds. Almost half of the people who took out student loans are still making payments on them. I don't know about you, but age 35 to 44, um, you know, I, I heard a cute saying the other day from Coach Dave. Um, at this time, we're in the acquisition mode where we should be acquiring houses and spouses. And so, you know, if we're doing that, do we really want to do that and have student loan debt? And then 45 to 54, one third of us who took out student loans are still paying back on student loans. Again, that's wealth building time. That's planning for retirement. So, uh, you know, again, this debt is all around us and it just simply has to stop. You know, and Justin, when we stop it, we see things like this happen. And this is when it gets fun. It does, Greg. And, you know, one thing, again, with killing debt, you know, debt is the number one cause of stress. Debt is the number one cause of divorce because of money fights and money problems. And the average household has at least 1000 to $2,000 a month going to non-mortgage debt payments. So when you add up your car payments, your credit card payments, your overdraft protection, your student loans, your home equity loans, the, borrow, the money you borrow from friends or family, there's at least 1000 to $2,000 a month for almost everyone we see going out into uh, debt. In fact, just yesterday I read a step. The average household, 24% of their income goes to debt. No, so Justin, I'm not, I'm not that bad. I'm, I'm not, you're, you're saying I'm down here on the bottom. You know, I'm only paying $100 a month or $500 a month. You know, why should I worry about it? Talk us through the chart. Yeah, you bet. Well, let's, let's look at $100. So let's say you took that $100 a month that you're thinking is all that you're out and you were to invest that properly. Um, and we just did 10%. That's an easy number. Look where you would be doing it month in and month out. 20 years later, you'd have $76,000 more than what you have today. And so what now, you're saying, again, you're, what, I'm sorry, what you're saying, most of us, though, what we're finding is we're running into clients closer to the bottom of the scale there. So, again, what you're, yeah, talk us what this is showing. So what you're saying is if we use that $1,000 to save instead of pay towards debt, look at where we'll be. And, and so let me ask you a question. If you were to be able to free up your debt to do this, are you really going to need Social Security? 
Are you going to be able to retire with dignity? Are you going to be able to do the things at the last set of your years when you have grandchildren that you want to spoil and give them a legacy and travel and do all the things that we all want to do when we retire? Free up your debt, guess what? You'll be able to do whatever you want, when you want. Those saying no's that we said earlier will turn into saying yeses, and they'll be saying yes without guilt. I guess in sort of a way, if, if man, uh, those of you guys listening, if you don't have a why, um, I think we've just given you one. You know, this, this uh, nothing else, uh, uh, do a snapshot of this uh, chart, hang this one on your mirror. You know, if, uh, if your why is strong enough, you'll figure out how. When I start looking at some of those squares, and, and I've been doing this stuff, so this isn't, this isn't fictitious, this really works. Um, hang that puppy on your, on your bathroom mirror every morning. Is that a strong enough why? I think so. Um, and, and talk us through our good friend Chris Hogan, what he has to say, Justin. Yeah, Chris Hogan's got a great saying when it comes to this. Interest that you pay is a penalty. Interest that you earn is a reward. I don't know if any of you have played game, board games with your family. We love board games like Monopoly and all those kind of things. You know, I don't like it when I have to put money in free parking. I like it, though, when people hit my property and give me money. <laughs> same, is, same is true um, with winning with life. I don't want to pay a credit card interest. I don't want to pay those. By the way, um, I mean, if you were to think that's just you, if you're averaging 18% on your credit card, think of the millions of people they have. That's why they're doing so well. Someone else is getting your money versus you getting your money and earning interest on it. Cool. And so what do we got to do again? There's the A word, action. You know, we've been talking all day today. You know, draw a line in the sand. Do something today. Set some goals. Write them down. Measure them. Um, and, and, and here's one way of getting started. You know, just a, just a couple of tips. Oh, things are so tight. Things are so tight. I can't find any extra money. I can't find money to apply towards debt to get out of debt faster. Keep going, baby. Keep going. You know, some some quick and easy adjustments. You may take a look at your W-4. If you adjust your W-4, maybe they'll um, you'll bring home a little bit more each month. Now, you don't want to get into a state where you're not bringing home anything and then you owe a big wad of income tax. You know, in April, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, maybe we can adjust our retirement. Can we stop retirement for a year or two? get out of debt, and then resume retirement and savings. Some of you may have some whole life insurance policies. Take a look at the insurance section of My Money Wellness. We recommend term life insurance. You may have some cash value stored up in whole life. You could cancel that policy only after getting a new fresh policy first. Hear me again. If you were to cancel whole life insurance and take the cash out, you need to have a new term life insurance policy in place first. You may get savings. You may get bonus. You may get gifts. You may need to sell stuff or trade the car. I can get rid of one debt you know, right now for most people. I got a car payment out there at $500. My car is worth $20,000. I owe $15,000 on it. Sell the car, pay it off, get rid of the $500 payment. And you have $5,000 cash to go buy a new car. Oh, I could never drive a $5,000 car. Well, then you can't say no to yourself. I did, and you can. And all of a sudden, you have an extra $500 a month to do some of the stuff that we're talking about. Um, you know, actually, I should say Coach Greg and Justin's challenge. Walk us through the importance of the emergency fund. Just very briefly, Justin, I think we're needing to wrap up. But uh, this is covered in the other part. So really quickly uh, through the emergency fund. Yeah, you bet. If you're going to kill debt, no, more than likely something's going to happen. A car is going to break down. Kids going to need braces. Something's going to come up. And if you make the commitment to get out of debt but have no money in savings, how are you going to pay for the little gotchas that come at the end of the month? So our challenge together is to get that $1,000 emergency fund, put it in a separate account, and do not touch it except for emergencies. Just pretend like there's razor wire, barbed wire, and armed guards. You're not going in there unless you absolutely have to. And just real quick, Greg, you know, we are talking about saying no earlier, and if you can't sell the car, if you can't do this, often I always hear, Justin, I can't do envelopes or this or that because I have. if I have $10 in my wallet, I'll spend it. If you can't handle $10 in your wallet, how are you going to handle $500,000 of retirement or a million dollars or $250,000? So we encourage you, build that momentum, take action. And I, I see the bank, so just a quick review. B is for budget. Again, once you get to know how to do a budget, it should take 10 to 15 minutes a month and do it before the month begins. 
you got to take action. Start today. Whether you just go all in and do everything all at once, or you just do it in small chunks, step, step at a time, gain that momentum. Say no. Like Coach Greg said earlier, it's not a noose. It's not saying you can't have any fun. But you obviously, if you're going to make different choices and say no to certain things now, you get to say yes later. And lastly, kill debt. Debt is the number one reason why we can't do anything that we really want to do in life. Get rid of the debt, start receiving interest, and stop paying interest. Greg? Justin, thanks so much. Uh, again, um, you know, B-A-N-K, there you go. I think, uh, you know, if, if someone asked me what's the most important one, I think I'd say all of them. You got to do the, but you know, you got to do the budget. But as Mark Twain says, here's the most important one. Secret of getting ahead is getting started. So as always, we thank you for joining our webinars here. If you have any questions about any of the material we covered or anywhere else on the website, we'd love to hear from you. You know, send your questions to support at mymoneywellness.com. Shameless plug, plug for Coach Ken's webinar last month um, on taxes and, and kind of preparing and getting organized for taxes. He really broke that down in a simplistic manner to do some things, much like we hope that we have done for you today. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Support at MyMoneyWellness.com. On behalf of Coach Justin, I'm Coach Greg, and always at MyMoneyWellness.com, we say go out and do something. We'll see you next time.